If I knew this before starting a blog, I promise you I would have found success much, much faster. In this video, I'm going to share with you 11 things I wish I knew before starting a blog so that you can skip over the mistakes that I made in the last five years and get to success faster. Okay, the first thing that you need to figure out when you're starting your blog is what is your goal? Now, when I started my first blog, my goal was to just, you know, have a creative outlet. I wanted to get back into writing. I wanted to learn a little bit about, you know, blogging and also share my tips and things that I was experiencing as an expat abroad in Germany. So clearly the focus of my blog when I first started out was just to have a creative outlet and have fun with it. However, if you're here watching this video, chances are that this might not be the main focus of your blog. You have to figure out at this stage whether you want this blog to make money and if the answer to that question is yes, then you need to prep and set up your blog like you would any other business. There's so many bloggers out there who just start, you know, doing this for fun and then they realize that they're getting serious about it and there's potential to make money but by that time it's already too late because you've made way too many mistakes and you're gonna have to repeat the process either all over again which is what I had to do or you're gonna have to completely flip your blog and start a new blog so in order to avoid that I want you to get really honest with yourself and ask yourself am I going to start this blog for it to be a hobby that I can you know just have privately never have to share with the world or am I gonna do this as a legit business where I want to make money one day and maybe also work on it full time because that is really going to set the tone for your blog as a business. Moving on, tip number two is to pick a niche or an industry that you care about. Now, it can be really tempting to look at bloggers out there or YouTubers out there who are making lots of money in certain industries and you go after them thinking that you can do the same. Now, here's the thing. Blogging is not a get rich quick scheme. You are not going to become a six figure blogger tomorrow. Like that's just unrealistic expectations and therefore you need to make sure that what you're going to pick as your niche is something that you either are passionate about so you really want to find out more about it or it's something that you're skilled at so you have an advantage when it comes to other bloggers out there because you're particularly skilled at it let's take the example of you know you want to start a blog around something legal now you can probably only do this if you have a legal background and that is exactly what makes you unique and special and allows you to put an effort time and time again even when you don't see the rewards right away. Contrary to this, you can also start a blog that you're passionate about as a hobby. So for example, if you're really passionate about gardening and you want to share your tips with, you know, your audience, then that's also okay. The key thing here is to make sure that it is something that you care enough about to stick with it for the next two to three years because you're probably not going to get rich in the next one month. So you want to make sure that you're picking a topic that you can stick by or that you can actually evolve with in the next couple of years. I made this mistake when I first started out by picking a blog that I thought that I was excited about but then one one and a half year later I realized that actually I couldn't see myself evolving with that blog and that topic anymore and that was absolutely not the direction that I could imagine myself writing on for years and years to come. So it's totally okay if you had a certain idea before you started your blog but once you begin to get serious you really want to make sure that you are focusing on a topic or a niche or a category that you can stick with for at least the next two years. Tip number three, and this is really, really important if you are not blogging full time, and that is to schedule time in your calendar. Now, things that get scheduled get done. If you just, you know, wake up and work on your blog whenever you feel like it, you are not going to end up being a successful blogger because you need consistency and discipline specifically in the first six to 12 months of your blog in order to get things going. This means that you need to figure out the time and the schedule of how you're going to be able to commit to your blog. So let's say that you've decided that you're going to publish one blog post a week. Now, in order to publish that one blog post, there's a lot of other work that goes in it as well. There's the researching, there's the figuring out the keywords, there's the getting the images, there's getting creatives, there is all the optimization that you need to do. So it's not just about you writing an article and putting it out there. There's a lot of thought process that goes behind it as well. In order to be able to successfully create blog posts that actually actually get discovered and that actually get read, you want to be dedicating a certain time during the week when you're just going to focus on your blog. Now, when I was a student and I had classes during the week and I was also working a job, I didn't really have the time to, you know, focus on my blog during the week. So what I did was that I would block time on my weekends just to sit down and, you know, brainstorm content on my blog as well as work on anything else that needed working on. So whether that meant working on Saturdays from, let's say, 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock, whatever it was, 
slots that I could figure out I would squeeze in. The key thing here is to figure out the time in your calendar and just schedule that in because if you don't do that, you're probably not going to have the discipline to sit down and commit to writing these blog posts and doing the work that's needed to make your blog a success. Moving on, tip number four is something that I intuitively was always doing and when I spoke to lots of other bloggers, I realized they weren't doing this and this is to create a goals tracker. Now, I know that when you're just starting out, you probably don't even know what your goal is with your blog and you're wondering, Shruti, how am I going to figure out what the heck is my goal? Now, my goals when I started blogging, specifically when I got serious about it, which was about two years in after having, you know, frolicked with my hobby blog, I realized that I needed some sort of marker or tracker to instill the discipline in me to actually be able to commit to my blog and see my growth. So for me, that meant, you know, figuring out how much traffic I was getting from my blog. So let's say in the first month, my goal was to get, let's say, a hundred page views. Or your goal could also be something to do with the social media platform that you use to promote your blog. So let's say you have an Instagram account where you go and publish your articles and talk about your blog or share your recipes or whatever. Maybe your goal is to have, you know, an increase in your followers every single month. Now, what this goals tracker does is that one, it allows you to motivate yourself to set goals at the beginning of every month. So let's say that you're going to pick three goals for your blog, whether that is, you know, writing for blog posts or it is growing your page views or it is starting a social media channel. Whatever the goal is, you want to write that down in a tracker, in an Excel sheet or a Google Doc. And then at the end of the month, you want to come back and check and see where you are with respect to those goals. What this is going to do, it's going to help you one, adjust your expectations, because if you set really unrealistic goals at the beginning, you're going to know that it's not realistic to set that goal anymore. And two, it's going to keep you motivated when you come back and see how much you've grown. So you might not see the growth in the first month or in the second month, but I promise you, you will see the growth when you look three, six, 12 months down the line and see what all you've achieved in your goals tracker. So make sure to create this goals tracker if you don't have it already. All right, while we're on the topic of goals, there's something really, really important. And this is going to be the next tip that I have for you is related to the previous tip that we just spoke about and is going to help you set goals. And this tip is to figure out your main marketing channel, also known as your main social media platform. Now, obviously, depending on the niche that you pick, you know, and the industry that you have and the age group of your audience, you're going to have one favorite over the other. But what I would really recommend you to look into and focus on is to just pick one thing and stick to it. Writing a blog and, you know, creating blog posts is already a lot of work. You don't want to start and manage seven different social media channels because trust you me, you're not going to get ahead unless you have a large team that's going to help you with it. So you want to be focusing on where is my audience hanging out that I could actually share my content and share my blog with and where could I direct them to read my blog. Now, this might look like Instagram for you if you have a really visual blog. So let's say you are a photographer and that's what your blog is about, then Instagram might be a great channel for you. This could look like Pinterest for you if you are in any of the lifestyle niches because Pinterest tends to be one of the quicker ways in which you can grow your audience on your blog and it really has so many advantages and I have tons and tons of videos on this channel that you can check out about that. But the key thing here is to just pick one platform at the beginning and not work on all the social platforms at the same time because you're going to overwhelm yourself and you're going to quit before you see success. So start with one. My recommendation would be to start with Pinterest if you are looking to grow your traffic and your audience. And if you want to build a personal brand that's really strong and you really want to work on brand deals and sponsored content, then I would recommend looking into either Instagram or TikTok. My preference being slightly more to TikTok just because it's a newer platform and it's a lot easier right now to gain traction on TikTok than it is on Instagram. So pick one platform and just stick to it for the first couple of months until you begin to see traction and then you can add more social media platforms later on when you have the time and the bandwidth to do it. While we're talking about platforms, the next tip is all about picking the right host. Now, this is something I wish and pray someone had told me about before I started my blog because I wasted so much time on it. I did a lot of Google search and as a lot of expert bloggers will tell you, Google search doesn't always yield the best results because a lot of the results can be rigged or influenced by page reviews. And a lot of the times you don't really have a good idea of where you should be starting out because you get overwhelmed with the amount of information. So when I was doing my research, I picked wordpress.com, which is also a type of hosting platform to start my blog with. And I think I was paying like between 10 to $20. It's been over five years, so I'm not sure exactly how much I was paying, but it's sufficient to say that I was paying a lot. And two years later, when I got serious about my blog and 
I started to invest in courses and ebooks, I realized I'd been doing the wrong thing all along. I was on the wrong host, I was on the wrong platform, and I could not grow my blog the way that I wanted to if I continued down this path. As a result of this, I had to switch over to another host, and then I had to spend weeks and weeks transferring all of my blog posts from the previous host to the new host, which not only wasted a crap ton of time, it also cost a lot of money because I had to hire developers to figure out how to do redirects, and it was just a whole big mess. So in order to avoid this, I would really recommend that you do the research right at the beginning and pick the right host. To keep things short, I'm going to tell you the host that I recommend, which is HostGator. And I recommend using HostGator along with WordPress.org. And WordPress.org is going to be the content management solution that you have. That's going to be the back end of what you see on the blog, where you're going to create blog posts, where you're going to install your theme and blah dee da But the place which is going to basically park your address in the online world is going to be your host. And I recommend starting out with HostGator because it is one of the cheapest and best platforms to start out there. I also have a discounted link in the description box below if you're interested. If you have a slightly higher budget, then you can also check out SiteGround, which is also something that I use for one of my blogs. And I love their customer support as well, but it is the pricier option. And I have a video on this. If you're looking for more details of comparisons, check out that video. I'm going to link it on the page here so you can see it after this video is over. The next tip that I have for you, and a lot of people underestimate the value of this tip, and this is to get guidance and support. Now, I don't care if all you can invest on right now or afford to invest on right now is an ebook or it is a membership or it is a course. It doesn't even have to be a course that I sell. It could be someone else's course if you resonate with their teaching style more. The reason why I recommend getting guidance and support is because it is so overwhelming at the beginning to figure out 400 things at the same time. You need someone who has already been through this and can tell you exactly what to focus on at which point in your blogging journey. Journey. This is something that I share inside CEO Blogger Academy in a lot of detail. So there's hours and hours of video content, but we have divided that into three different phases because I know that as a new blogger, you can't go to phase three without having set the foundation of phase one and phase two. And this is where it's also important to think about accountability as well as support. Because when you're doing this, you're probably doing this alone. Your friends and family probably are not bloggers. I mean, I know mine weren't and they still struggle to understand what I do for a living which might also be the case if you are, you know, in a similar sort of social setting, which means you might feel really lonely down the line while you're on this journey. And this is where having some sort of a group or a membership or even somewhere where people can hold you accountable and offer you support is so, so amazing because it gives you the feedback and, you know, the hype that you need to keep going and not give up, especially at the beginning where it's really tempting to just quit and, you know, move on. Okay, the next tip that I have for you is a, really, really practical tip. And this has again saved me so much time. And this is to create an income and expense tracker. Now, this is simply an Excel sheet where you're going to list down all of the expenses that you have incurred on your blog, either on a monthly or a quarterly basis. I do it on a monthly basis because it gives me a really good idea of what I'm spending versus what I'm earning. And as you grow your blog and you start to generate an income from it, you can also start writing down the income sources of that so that you can not only see the the progress of your blog, but it will also help you, you know, really save time on accounting when you do have to file your taxes. What's important here is that you have an income and expense tracker that showcases to you exactly what you have been spending on, on your blog and what you have been earning. And at the end of every quarter or every six months, you can actually recap just like you did in your goals tracker and see how far you have come. Now, this is something that we also offer inside of CEO Blogger Academy to our students, including the goals tracker. So if you want to skip the part where you figure this out by yourself, I would love for you to join us inside CEO Blogger Academy where you will have access to all of my resources and specifically the income and expense tracker that you can use to track everything from day one. And while we are on practical tips, the next one is also a really, really practical tip. And again, this is something that I wish someone had told me about to basically save me the annoyance that I had to go through afterwards. And this tip is to save all of your social media channels in advance. Now, I know I told you to focus on one social media channel channel and I'm pretty sure that you probably will pick that channel name or the username or the handle name as what your blog's name is but what I want you to do at this step is to go on every social media platform that you can think of whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, any and every social media platform that you can think of even the ones that are just up and coming go and reserve your handle name right
right now because what's going to happen as you grow is that you will want to diversify your social media platforms and you would want to have like an omni channel marketing presence and when you get to that point and realize all your brand names are gone then you're going to have to put in random numbers and hyphens in your brand name or put like build your wealth two four which does not look as professional as your legit brand name so whatever your blog name is or if your blog name is the same name as your personal name just go and reserve all these handles to save you so much trouble in the future the next tip that i have for you is to use a tool to organize your blog and be productive in line with the fact that there are so many things you're constantly doing and learning and you probably also have you know other things that you're doing in your life you want to have a place where you can keep an idea of what's going on in your blog what are the articles that you're working on what are the ideas and all of that so what you want to do here is to figure out a tool that you can you know use for task management and when I first started out I was using Trello which was something that I had learned about from my previous job but off late me and my assistant have moved on to Notion and I have to say I love this tool like it was a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how to use Notion correctly but once we got on it this is where we have our content library where we post out all of the content that we have this is where we save our keyword ideas this is where we save our SOP this is where we save pretty much everything that we need to run the business and this is also a free tool which means you can get started with using it today and just have a place where you can track all of the progress of your blog specifically on the tasks that you are doing with your blog and where you are with them so you can create a plan on notion and track whether or not you're able to complete them at the end of every month this brings us to the last tip that I want to share with you and believe you me, this is one of the most important tips that I'm going to leave you here with and this is to focus on being a specialist rather than a generalist. Now, I cannot tell you how many people come to me and ask me if they should start a blog in five different topics. Should they start a blog in fashion, food, decor, everything possible under the sun under one name. Now, here's the thing. This could have been a great thing like five or ten years ago when there was a lot less competition and it was a lot easier to grow quickly as a blogger but this is not a great thing right now when there are millions and millions of blogs and new ones popping in every single second you can grow much faster and you can go much further by focusing on being a specialist rather than a generalist at the beginning like there is nothing to say that you cannot add on more blogs or more niches or more audiences as you grow and you've really established your presence and your you know business however when you're just starting out I want you to focus on two categories at the most even within the niche that you're in so let's say that your niche is going to be about vegan recipes if this is the niche that you pick even vegan recipes in itself is really really broad niche so how can you you know hone that down and kind of niche that down even further maybe you can focus on recipes of a particular kind so maybe you can focus on vegan recipes that are soy based so that are made with you know soy products or maybe you can focus on vegan recipes for fitness instructors like I don't care how how you figure out the subcategories or the specialization of your category but you really want to be focusing on content that dives deep instead of goes wide not only because it's going to help you establish your brand a lot quicker but because even when it comes to ranking on places like Google, Google is going to establish your authority much quicker when you have 100 blog posts on a certain narrow content category versus when you have 100 blog posts but they're spread across 10 different categories. Like who should be your ideal audience if you're writing about travel, food, lifestyle, tech, accessories, fashion, everything under the roof. So when you're starting out, I would really recommend that you focus on being a specialist rather than being a generalist. And this is also something that you're going to realize as you grow your audience that when it comes to brands and companies that want to work with you, they would really, really prefer bloggers who have a specific audience that they can market and work with and know exactly what the response of this audience would be rather than working with a blogger who writes about 10 different things and they don't know if their audience is the right match or not. So it's a lot easier to pitch and work with companies and do collabs, specifically if you're looking to do sponsored content on your blog when you have a very narrow and a specific audience so that brings us to the end of this video to continue this conversation make sure to check out my video on how to pick the right blogging niche for you and some of the most popular blogging niches that you can work with right now if you're interested in working with me and having my guidance and support i'd love to see you inside ceo blogger academy you can find the details in the description box below thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already i'll see you in the next one